So welcome back to another video of Bosch K Jetronic. Now, why am I dealing with Porsche? Why not? So this is here, Porsche K Jetronic unit from a 924 2 liter Nash Jack spread. Uh, these particular models are absolutely faultless. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, these ones, particularly on the cars from 1975 to 1989. Porsche also on the Saab 900 Turbo and the Porsche 924 Turbo. Now, if you look back at my other video, the Porsche collaboration one, this is the metering head I've used on my car. Sorry, air meter. Now, this, this, I say it's fault free, it's non adjustable. So, literally, whatever the engine can lift, suck and lift that plate is what fuel comes out. Now, this one tested, um, I tested it already, five point, yeah, five bar system pressure um maximum up we're getting out 200 milliliters a minute of fuel straight off the cuff um that's more than my mark II's doing but again that's not saying that this is chucking out 200 milliliters a minute into the engine because it requires the engine to lift that flap high enough to actually put that fuel in this flap may only reach three quarters of its potential lift with the that with the engine it's fitted to um, 125 brake engine so slight differences in these is the system pressure so um, this is rigged up just fuel in fuel out these do have different connections on for the fuel um, systems on the on the Porsche like the your fifth injectors and um, your other stuff so what we're going to do is go through the system main system pressure now it's a very different setup than what the previous looking at as in 16 valves where you've got two different seals this is just one seal and the spring but i'll pull it out and i'll show you exactly what it is because again if you haven't got your system pressure building up you haven't got the fuel coming out of the injectors so again back to the basic principles that system pressure is vitally important so you want to make sure it gets in there stays in there and comes out the injectors so the system pressure on these like i said is in this output here 14 mil nut is cracked off at the moment, so we'll just take that out and see what is inside. Let's say it's already cracked off, there's no fuel pressure in it, that's already come out. And if you're doing this with fuel pressure, it's gonna squirt out a bit. So, as you can see, a lot bigger flap on these, like I've used on mine, but again, I digress as I normally do. So, we've got Spring and a washer. We've got one spring, one washer, and our end cap. And then we've got some other bits inside there. And here we go, the other part, just an end. So that is our pressure relief system. So again, system pressure pushes it up. And that spring pressure, when it overcomes spring pressure, that moves and diverts fuel back to the tank. The more tension you've got on this spring, the higher the system pressure is going to be. Same principles as before, just very different. And we've only got one sealing ring to deal with. Tiny little one on the end there. Again, it will zoom in. So again, if that's worn, so it is quite tapered, so that's going to get changed. So you may ask where the shims are. There's the shims, one and two. And they sit in this housing here. Now, 0 0.1 millimeter shim, which is that little flat one there, will increase system pressure by 0 0.15 bar or 2.2 psi. I think that converts to again adding or removing shims, removing them reduces system pressure, adding them increases system pressure. Now, what's the bonus of this one and that? Well, as on the last video modifying the metering head the more system pressure we got the more fuel comes out this isn't adjustable so whatever comes out of it comes out of it so if you raise the system pressure by adding more shims more fuel comes out now as stock five bar this one is it's putting out 200 milliliters a minute of fuel so if you've got your turbo cars um, like your 900 turbos or your um porsche 90 turbos or even any other car you want we want more fuel out. This is the metering head you really want to get maximum fuel. Obviously, maximum fuel is not perfect all over because it's K-Jet, but 
thought of a video to show you exactly what goes wrong on a Porsche one, the early Porsche non-adjustable units, again, same as a Saab 900 Turbo, um, the Volvo 240 Turbo, Porsche 94 Turbo. And that is the difference of, let's say, our system pressure. We've got our shims that sit inside that, copper washer, spring, and our end part. And obviously, we're going to stick a new seal on there just to make sure the system pressure is staying in there, mainly residual pressure. Because if you lose a residual pressure, you're going to have hot start problems, and we don't want that. So, system pressure's in. So, we'll just run it up and do a test. There you go, sorry, far. And as you can see, that is flowing nice and even. That rear one number four looks worse than it does, but again, I need to, you know, it's the gaps between the top of these. Obviously, they're differing, that's touching up, and the injectors aren't sat perfect. So while we've really got the gauge on, I'll just go through, obviously, system pressure and residual pressure. So I'll bang it back up again, and we'll get up to system pressure. Right, there you go, system pressure at five or five point. Five bar, and then we turn the power off. As in, you turn the ignition off, you shut the engine off. That is your residual pressure, which means residual is in is what's staying inside the metering head. Now, that is what's that? Two point two point eight bar. Now, ideally, we want that to stay at two point eight bar for half out of forty minutes. I mean, when I test them, I leave for forty five minutes. Anything more than that, then it's good. Now. Residual pressure is important because of hot start problems. So you've got all this fuel system stuff inside the car engine bay. You've got a lot of heat in there and you've got fuel pipes. Now the fuel, the heat will evaporate the fuel in the fuel lines. So what you don't want is the fuel to evaporate in the lines and then you've got to try and start the car again with no fuel pressure. So what the residual pressure does is hold pressure in the system and if at any point the fuel starts evaporating in the lines, like the 16 valve golfs where the fuel pipes are right sort of by the exhaust side, same as all the other cars really, the pressure in there will keep in fuel pressure in the line. So whatever evaporates, you've got pressure in there to move that fuel back al along the line into the metering head. So when you come to start it, the engine's the engine's warm, it's got the fuel pressure to go bump straight in there and start, and obviously. Over a longer period, the engine's cooled down, it can start as normal with the fifth injector and the cold start system, etc. So there you go, that is a Porsche metering head, the non-adjustable version. Um, simple system pressure, so simple. You think KJ is a simple system like on the Mark II Golf and the normal ones. That's even even simpler, there's, there's nothing to go wrong. You, obviously fuel can get blocked up, blah, 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 but you've got system pressure in there and it's not blocked. Got your fuel coming out, and obviously, the higher that airplay goes, the more fuel comes out, so it's perfect for cars. Again, we've got a warm up regulator on this, um, same as normal warm up regulators. This is in for a double test, rebuild, warm -up, rebuild the warm up regulator, and just test the metering head, it's working so they can go back on the car all hunky dory. We know the system pressure works, residual pressure not too bad. Um, fuel outputs are as close as I can get. I can't adjust anything, it is what it is. Um, they're very close, which is fine, but again, these aren't a perfectly matched injection system. Injection system, injectors, um, they're as close as I can get. Um, I do test these regularly on the work I'm doing, but you'll find um, you can buy four brand new fuel injectors from Bosch um, or even the Merck injectors, which I like using because they're cheap and, well, they're cheap. And they, they throw away items to me. You can't, you can clean them, but not really suitably. So you can get, I don't know, four or eight injectors, all brand new. And you'll have to mix match out of those eight to get four that are really perfect with each other. Um, again, you've always got different tolerances. So there we go. 
Porsche 924 non-adjustable uh, meter and head testing and the lights just come on as we're finishing the video I need to sort that bulb out system pressure on there and residual pressure yeah that's not bad like I said it's dropped a bit but you know if it drops within this period we've been chatting if that drops below two bar we've got problems but to be honest that's um it's been what 20 minutes now in between filming and it's dropped 0.2 of a bar that's pretty good so cheers for watching look out for the next one i will be doing the ke jetronic it's just a nightmare to do and i'm very busy um like i say i've got the patron page um and the membership's going more the merrier always happy lots of people at the moment taking lots of you know what's the word lots of um opportunities to uh learn I say i'm more than happy to teach people tell people i'm self-taught um i believe in learning from manuals and physically looking at things and going all ah, right that's how it works and again in the description there's links for e-manuals online um like i say i've got a porsche 924 manual of them from the kdetronic because um it's your basic porsche uh, basic bentley manual or bosch manual which gives you a whole overview but then the porsche version that just gives those little because there are differences, warm up regulator differences, and injector output differences. So, links in the description, you know, 22% off, no brainer. So, uh, see you in the next one. Cheers. You know that I'm a keep it cold. With you, I feel a breaking rules. Only edge looking out with no parachute. You know, I'm dreaming by.